If you want to control the temperature in your house, where would you go? You would go directly to wherever your thermostat is in your house. You would set it to whatever temperature you want it to be and you would just walk away. Well, let's say you want to control the temperature of the planet Earth. What do you do then? Let's find out. As you know, Earth doesn't have a magic thermometer standing on some wall somewhere that you can just walk up to and set to 72 degrees and forget about it. Earth does have a way to control its temperature, though. And the thing that controls its temperature is something that you probably are familiar with and have heard of before. It's called a greenhouse gas. What a greenhouse gas is, is it is a gas that traps heat. If you've ever looked at a greenhouse, that's a place made of glass where plants are. So essentially a house for plants. And since plants are green, that's how we get the name greenhouse. If you ever walked inside one, you've noticed that they are extremely warm. And that's because the heat from the outside gets in but it can't get out. Here's another example. Your car in the summertime. You get in your car in the summertime, it's hot. It's hotter than it is on the outside. That's because heat energy got in, but it could not get out. That's what a greenhouse gas does. It allows energy from the sun to come from the outside of the atmosphere and get in, but Greenhouse gases will not let the gas, or rather the heat, get back out. Greenhouse gases will trap heat on the inside of the atmosphere. And one major greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide. Or you might hear it pronounced as carbon dioxide. Either way, it's one of your major greenhouse gases. And what carbon dioxide does is it traps heat. Sunlight comes into the atmosphere, it bounces off the surface of the earth, but it gets trapped in the atmosphere because the carbon dioxide is there and won't let it loose. Now, what will happen is if you add too much carbon dioxide, that heating effect will increase. More and more heat energy will get trapped because there's more and more gas to trap it. So you're like, well, wherever this carbon dioxide is coming from, let's stop it. Well, you're going to have a hard time with that, especially this first part. The first source of carbon dioxide is pretty hard to stop because you would have to stop an entire volcanic eruption. Yes, the source of greenhouse gases, particularly carbon dioxide on Earth, are two things. And the first one is a volcano. When volcanoes erupt, they release a lot of carbon dioxide, which will warm the area, but they also release a lot of something else called ash. Ash is the same stuff that you see whenever you burn wood in your fireplace. It's that stuff that's at the bottom. And since volcanoes get pretty hot, they make ash as well. Now, when a volcano erupts, that black stuff you see floating into the sky, that's ash. And what happens is that ash gets into the atmosphere and it starts to reflect sunlight. The sunlight can't go through the ash, so it bounces off. And the temperature beneath the ash and beneath the entire area that the ash is covering starts to decrease. So you probably are saying, well, if we had the carbon dioxide that's warming and the ash that's decreasing the temperature, well, doesn't that balance out? Yes, in the short term, it does. But as everybody knows, what goes up must come down. Eventually, that ash floats back down to the surface. It can't stay up there forever. And then the sunlight comes through and that carbon dioxide is still in the atmosphere. And volcanoes release a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere each year. They release 270 million tons of it. But guess what? 
they're not the major contributor of carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases. The major contributor is something a little bit closer to you. So close, in fact, that it actually is you. Humans are the major contributor of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Every time you start a vehicle, rather it be a car, a bus, a plane, a train, a ship, a boat, if it runs on any form of gas or diesel or jet fuel, it's burning what's called a fossil fuel. And when you burn a fossil fuel, you release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So the school bus you ride adds carbon dioxide. The car you ride in adds carbon dioxide. That one time you flew on a plane, carbon dioxide. The one time you took the cruise with your family during a summer vacation, carbon dioxide. All of these add up to release billions and billions of tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And they're not the only way that carbon dioxide gets into the atmosphere. What if you were to say, let's replace all of those vehicles with electric vehicles like Tesla? Well, ask yourself this question. Where does the electricity to charge the Tesla come from? If you said the power plant, you're right. But here's the question. What does the power plant burn to make that electricity? They burn charcoal or coal. And when you burn coal, coal releases carbon dioxide. So even some of your power plants are releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And when you add up what the power plants release, and when you add up what all the vehicles release, and oh, by the way, you release carbon dioxide every time you exhale. So those of you who talk a lot, you're really helping the atmosphere out. Psych. You're releasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And so when you add up all of humans' activities throughout the entire year, we release 200 and, excuse me, we release 28, not 200, 28 billion tons of carbon dioxide per year, which is over 100 times what volcanoes release. Volcanoes only release 270 million tons. We release 28 billion. So we're up over 100 times greater than what a volcano or what all volcanoes will release in a year. So here's a question. If humans are causing all of that carbon dioxide to be released, what's going to happen? Well, the temperature is going to keep warming and warming and warming and warming. Ever heard of global warming? This is a direct result. As you increase carbon dioxide, the temperature will also increase. So how will we reverse or stop that global warming? Well, the easiest way is to plant more plants. Every time you plant a plant, that plant becomes a little vacuum cleaner for carbon dioxide. It sucks some carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and it turns it into oxygen. And that's great. So we should probably plant more plants. But what's actually happening is the opposite. People are cutting down more and more plants. This is called deforestation. They cut down plants and they burn them. And a lot of times they burn them to either build farms or they burn them to expand cities. But either way, they're burning the forest. And when you do that, that releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere because the plants themselves have that carbon dioxide in them and they have carbon in them. And when you burn it, you release carbon dioxide. So planting plants is good. Burning plants is bad. So what's another way we can reduce the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Well, for one, we could stop using coal to make electricity. If instead of making a coal burning power plant, we made a nuclear power plant 
or a solar array. That's when you take a bunch of solar panels and stick them together to produce electricity. Or if you made wind turbines, those are those tall towers that spin around when the wind blows. They produce electricity. If you made a nuclear power plant, a solar array or a wind turbine, those would release, excuse me, reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. They would reduce it. But when you have coal burning plants, they release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So let's recap everything. A greenhouse gas is a gas that's going to trap heat. Examples of a greenhouse gas, most notably, will be carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide comes from two major places, volcanoes, which also release ash, and humans. Humans release carbon dioxide by breathing, by burning plants, and by burning fossil fuels. Now, the simplest way to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere would be to plant more plants. And other ways to reduce it would be to stop using coal to produce electricity. So no more coal burning power plants. If you learned something from this video or you found it entertaining or interesting, feel free to leave a like. In fact, you must leave a like. If you don't leave a like, then more carbon dioxide will be released in the atmosphere and we'll all be hot and chicken fried. So thumbs up. It's mandatory. Do your part.